All right, I think we can get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, in today's workshop, we're going to talk about building compelling data stories with Tableau. But before we get started, I wanted to give you guys some context and really talk to you about why I chose Tableau versus a different data visualization or BI tool or platform or language, right? You can do a lot of this uh, leveraging different tools, um, but I chose Tableau because it's an industry leader. And so I felt like, you know, with limited time, what's the best thing for your buck? And um, it would be Tableau. There's a public version of it available. So if you have not prepared uh, or if you have not downloaded um, the public version of Tableau yet, go ahead and do that now. And I'll try to drop the link real quick, but if you just do a search for Tableau Public, you'll be able to find that. Um, Tableau Public and Tableau in general has a really strong community um, and it's really geared towards self-learners. So that's another reason why I, I chose Tableau and the skills are transferable. So, um, you know, we'll be learning how to do things in Tableau during the session and we'll be focused on the, the tool itself, but the skills that you'll pick up during today's session are transferable to other BI tools. Um, and some of the some of the foundational concepts that we'll talk about today are um, going to be transferable in, in terms of just thinking about like visual analytics um, anyway. And another quick reason why I, I do love Tableau just as a tool itself is that they're, they make really frequent um, updates um, into their platform and they incorporate some cutting edge technology. Um, and that's, I think, why they, they've become the industry leader. So they're incorporating this technology long before their competitors are. So thinking about like auto ML um, and, and some of the capabilities and their like clustering and forecasting um, and then uh, augmented analytics in terms of like doing the, um, the visualizations ahead of you, you know, and the data preparation for you. Um, and then the, the, there's, there, there are just so many cool features. So <laughs> I'm sure that I'll, I'll share some of that with you. And, and NLP is actually one of those that they just recently uh, released. And when it comes to me and how I use Tableau, so I lead our analytics um, center of enablement here at Carter's. And so my team has been really focused on enabling self-service analytics and reporting for business users. Um, but then we also work on advanced analytics projects. So we're building our own um, in-house machine learning models and deploying to business users. So the way that we use Tableau is, you know, it aids our exploratory data analysis. Um, it enables our business reporting. But then the framing of Tableau for me is really as like a decision insights tool, right? So it's the front end that we give to our business users to make business decisions from the models that we're building. Um, and if you are, if you've never used Tableau before or you've used it um, solely in the business intelligence space, right, but you're you're starting to play a little bit more in the advanced analytics space, Tableau still has a place for you um, because this is where, again, your business users are going to be consuming the insights that you're, you've, you've identified through your modeling. All right, so for today's session, um, like I said, you're going to have to have Tableau Public or Tableau, some, some type of Tableau installed, um, and then we will work with some data that's found on data.world. I'll have all of this available in my GitHub. I haven't made it public yet, but I will um, after this call, but the premise of this session is really going to be um, around the Makeover Monday challenge, and so I'm going to flip back and forth between um, my screens, if you give me a second here. So Makeover Monday is a weekly Tableau community challenge. Um, and it, what it does is it takes a visualization that or, or some type of data story, right, um, that's already out in, in the world, and it makes that data available and it challenges you to think about how um, how to revise to make this either the story more effective or to identify different stories uh, to tell, right? And so um, 
Sounds like Tidy Tuesdays for the R community. I'm not as familiar with Tidy Tuesdays, but I bet you it's similar. And what we're going to do for this session is we're going to use one of the week's challenges. I think it's week 14, and I'll show you guys um, to like as the premise of this. But there's another weekly challenge called um, Workout Wednesday. And Workout Wednesday is a little bit of the opposite, where instead of you like trying to change something that's already out there, you're trying to rebuild it, right? So they give you like a, a dashboard and they say, okay, like figure out how we built this. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a mix of that. I'm going to show you the, the challenge for Makeover uh, Monday, and then I'm going to show you a dashboard that I built, why I thought it was more effective, and then we're going to work on uh, building that together. Um, and then in the slide, which I know will be made available to you guys, you'll see that Makeover Monday is linked. So if you click on that, it'll take you directly to this page. So we'll go to data sets here and we'll click on 2023 and you'll see um, on week 14 is the, that's the challenge that we'll be working on. So it's hate crime in Chicago. It's not the most recent challenge, um, but when I click this, this is about cars. So it wasn't, it wasn't that interesting to me. Um, and I was like, well, let me, let's do hate crime. Um, another great thing about this is when I was trying to think about how we're going to do the session, this gives you something to publish, right? So at the end of the session, you'll be able to put this on Tableau, Tableau Public. You'll be able to share it, um, host it on your GitHub, and it really expands your portfolio. So if you, even if you have no experience in Tableau, I really do recommend uh, starting to like work in some of these um, or starting to apply to some of these challenges, right? Like, like, take a week on and and uh try to try to do the the challenge and, and incorporate the visualizations into your workflow because that's how you're going to expand your portfolio and really get to flex those muscles all right so um if you go here we'll click into hate crime in chicago it's going to take us to this page here um let me go back here all right, so this is this is the landing page. This is the current visualization. What we'll do right now is I just want to kind of review what's like what they have, right? I want to get a better understanding of um, the insights that they're delivering, the mode of delivery, the method of delivery, and then let's talk about what works and what doesn't work. I'm doing my best at like moderating the chat, the Q and A on one screen, and then also kind of walking you guys through the workshop. But I do want to hear your thoughts. So if you have any feedback on like the current, um, and like, let me actually put this in here. So here's the link. So why don't you guys navigate to, hold on, I just shared this to everybody. All right. So navigate to this dashboard and let me hear your thoughts. What do you think about this? And um, for me at first, like um, it's, it's small, right? Like look at how, look at this versus this. It's, default to 67 just because of the sizing of it. Um, I, If I'm zooming in, I get a lot of information on like, what is hate crime? What do I do if I'm a victim? There are a bunch of resources, which I actually really like. And then there's a lot of text, right? I mean, a lot of text, which could be a good or bad thing. Um, I'm going to start distilling some of the insights that they're showing here. So um, this is really looking at total hate crimes, if they're on the rise, um, then looking at like what the motivation between, but what the motivation behind the hate crimes is, right? Is it sexually oriented, religious, uh, race, ethnicity? And it looks like the majority of the hate crimes uh, are, you know, motivated by, by race. And then we're looking at like if the trends are different. So it's a lot of data. It's a lot of insights. And, and I'm just scrolling down. I mean, it's a lot. <laughs> um, it's too much for me because once I just the first time that I viewed this, like when I, I never made it past this, I was just getting like overwhelmed. The level of detail was too much. So even though this is really interesting. Interesting information, interesting ways to look at it, right? Like I, I like that they're looking at okay, overall trends versus like different segments of it. It just became too much for me to really distill. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on like what they like or what they don't like about this. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can move on. So if you go to, 
Uh, Eric, you, you think it's busy too? Same. I just think it's it's too much. If you go back to Makeover uh, Monday, this page, and let me also link this for you guys because this is where you'll get your data. Um, you can download the data from the data source. So we'll click, uh, we'll click here. Sorry. So data is that third column. We'll click the link here. Eric, you're saying you feel like the cue point should be highlighted and more prominent. Okay, so we're going to try to do that during uh, today's session. And you tell me if we do a better job or not, or if you have different ideas. But I, I love having you guys engaged as much as possible. So I love that I'm hearing from some of you guys. Um, okay, so here's the data. Um, we're going to go in. We have these first two here are really, uh, they're, they're, like geo files. So this is going to help us map. But for this session, just because I don't think that we're going to have the time to get into that, we're going to focus mostly on the Excel. So I'll go ahead and download that down and download this one file. And the, you know, just to kind of level set expectations as well, when we start this, I'm really going to focus on the first part of what we viewed in this dashboard, right? So I'm really going to focus on overall trends and then the motivation behind those trends and how that impacted the total, right? Um, there's, like I said, a lot of detail within this data and we'll get to see some of that as we explore the data set. But I'm um, something that I, I was interested in was like, where, where are these crimes happening? And can we start to do some, some advanced analytics around that? But we're not gonna have time to get to that. So this is gonna be a little bit of a tease for you guys. I'm gonna help you get started on Makeover Monday week 14 challenge. And then after the call, if you are inspired, you'll have the opportunity to really build on, on that narrative and build on that story. All right, so I have the data downloaded. I have a new instance of Tableau open. And what I'm gonna do is uh, if you're in Tableau with me, all right, so now we're gonna get into like the workshopping. <laughs> if you're in Tableau with me, uh, you can connect to data. Tableau has a whole lot of native, native connections. This is another reason why I love Tableau. It's like every, you know, every day, it seems like they're enabling a uh, connection to more and more data. Um, but since our data is in Excel, we'll go ahead and we'll connect to a file. So we'll click Microsoft Excel. And I have it in my download. So I'll click hate crime in Chicago. I'll open it. All right. So this is a little bit of that augmented analytics where uh, you can use data interpreter. So if you have some empty uh, rows or columns that like in Excel you use for formatting, uh, Tableau can interpret that for you and kind of clean it up a little bit. So you see that this is the workbook that I'm connected to and this is the sheet where the data is. Um, and that's what we're using for today's session. Um, here you can get a sample of the data. So the first four, uh, first 100 rows, you can see kind of the column headers. This is really, you know, where we can get a feel for the type of data that's inside the file and the data types. And you can get that too here in the summary. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, if you're doing this, um, I'm not gonna do the, I'm not gonna extract like right now, just because I wanna save as, as much time as I can. Um, but best practices, if we look at like the connection live versus extract, best practices to extract, because what it does is it takes a snapshot of your data at that current time, and it really speeds up visualization for you. Um, instead of it talking, like instead of your Tableau workbook talking back and forth between the um, the workbook and the, the Excel file, you're just taking like a snapshot of that Excel file and storing it within the Tableau workbook. So that's just pre best practices. We don't have to do it right now uh, because we're going to focus on telling a data story. What we'll do from this data source pane after we've made our connection is we're going to go into sheet one. And this is where the analysis starts to happen, right? Or the data exploration. And really when I kind of talk to people who are just starting out in Tableau and might have never used, you know, the tool before, I say like, just double click on what you're interested in and let's see what happens, right? Like, let's get a sense of the data. You can get a sense of the data also by just looking at like right here, this table view. And it'll, again, show you that 
that data that we saw in the sample, but I want to get a better understanding of like the different aggregations, right, and, and the different values. So I'm going to double click on date first. That's the first thing I want to, I'm interested in, because I want to know um, like how much data do we have in here? And then I see that there's some uh, weird formatting in here because it has like the date and the time. So I'm actually going to change the data type of the date field from string. So if you click in ABC, uh, you'll be able to change the data type from string to date. And now let's see what happens. So now I see uh, just the aggregation of the days. That's perfect. I'm going to remove this now. I'm going to double click again to see if it's it can recognize it now as like a hierarchy of dates and it does. So I see that we have data from 2012 to 2023. And then we also have some nulls. So I didn't get a sense of how many nulls we have. So inside of the data, I have this, you know, measure called table data count. And I'm going to double click that. And I see I only have one null. So what I'll do just to kind of keep the data clean is I'm going to exclude this. So I'm going to click on null. And then I get a pop up that says exclude. Now, there are many ways that you can do that. You can just add date to the filters as well and filter out that null. Um, but this, this is an easy way to do it. I want to make sure that I didn't lose anybody. So if you are feeling a little bit lost, if you're having a hard time navigating, feel free to drop, drop a question in the chat. Um, all right, so I see we have data from 2012 to 2023. By the way, when you look at your data pane here, right inside the sheet, the blue marks at the top, these are your discrete values. And so these are really most of, these are your, your dimensions, right? Your attributes, they're your uh, dis describers. The green values underneath here, these are your measures, right? So this is your, your quantitative uh, data. All right, so I see my years. Now I want to better understand uh, the number of victims. All right, so I get a total number of victims. Again, all I'm doing right now is I'm just double clicking it. You know, you can also drag and drop. Um, you can really, for me, when I first start, I just want to get a sense of like what type of data is there and what am I looking at? All right, so I see now that the total number is on the rise. I saw a little bit of a shift here in 2019, a drop in 2020, and then another shift upwards in 2021 and 2022. But that's just me kind of taking, like doing some of the mental rough calculation in my head. Uh, there's a better way to do this, right? So let's first look at visualization. So I'm gonna go into the show me uh, interface here. So I'm gonna click into the this, again, this is your augmented analytics where it's recommending visualizations for you based on the data that you have in the sheet. Um, and so these are like quick charts that Tableau can create. Anything that's highlighted or like that's green. Sorry, I see somebody had. How do you decide how much data mentioning transfer? Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll address that a little bit because I, I did a little bit of data transformation here and I did it mostly because of the 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 premise of the, the visualization I wanted to tell or the story I wanted to tell. So in here, when we look at like what visualizations we can create, we can't create a scatter plot. We don't have all of the fields that we need, uh, a, a histogram, but it's recommending that I do a, a multi-line chart. And I know that it's recommending that because there's a, a an orange box around it. So let me click into that just to see what that looks like. All right. I'm okay with this. Um, if I look at the marks card here, I can change it from a line to a bar to a circle, right? So let's just see like what that looks like. So those are, those are circles instead of a line. Um, and I can also change the color. You can have it colored by some of the measures in here. When I was kind of distilling the story that I wanted to tell, I chose to do bars instead. So for now, we'll I'm going to move it back to bars and I'll tell you why. So this is giving me the total number of victims, but I really want to show like get a sense of like the the percentage change, right? Like how much is uh is it changing? Um what's the trend? So I'm going to add a quick table calculation in here. I'm going to do a drop down from a uh, sum of victims and add a quick table calculation to show the percent difference. 
All right, so now I see that uh, data is changing, but I'm I'm struggling right now because I that's kind of, this is a little bit of what I wanted, but not all the way. I want to label the percentage change and I want to show it, visualize, visualize it with color, but I want the total number to be the height of the bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hit command and drag that over to the label. All right, and then do the same thing, drag it over to the color. Now I'm going to change this. I'm going to get rid of the table calculation here so that I'm still showing the total number of victims, right? The reason that I did that is if you look here, it looks like, you know, somebody who's just kind of taking a first glance of this visualization, they're trying to develop a story in their head. This the, the story might not be as bleak, right? They're like, oh, like this is some, most of the time, you know, positive, but there, there are significant times where uh, it's negative and they're, they could be thinking, oh, no victims, right? Um, and I want to change that narrative. I really want to show that, no, nope, we're having like, there are victims here, right? Um, it's just that the change in victims is, has has been on the rise and we're seeing sometimes a, a fall here like in 2020, which was probably correlated um, or related to COVID, right? So here I'm showing just how much the uh, the total number of victims for of hate crimes is changing and then how many uh, victims we had. All right, so I'm gonna name this sheet as um, hate crimes over time. But now I want to start thinking also, like, what, who are the victims? Like, how, how are these hate crimes motivated? And we know that there's a motivation feature in here. So what I'll do is instead of like starting from scratch, and instead of losing the current visualization that I have, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to duplicate this. And then remember, we're gonna drag and drop as a quick start and we're gonna do um, double clicking just to figure out where everything lives. So I'm gonna double click motivation and let's see where it drops. I don't like this. <laughs> um, I'm gonna move motivation down into the rows. All right, so this looks a little bit better but I'm seeing that there's a lot of, um, a lot of motivations, right? And probably, let me see if I can, I'm going to create a new a new sheet just to get a sense of, okay. So I think that a lot of this can be grouped together, right? So anti-Asian, anti-Arab, um, Hindu, like this can all be grouped together for, in, in the race, ethnicity, category, right? And then we have some anti-lesbian, anti-gay, that can all be sexual orientation group. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to create a group and let me pull up one of my other sheets. So this is what we're, this is the end result that we'll be creating. Um, let me, I'm going to copy this group over just for the sake of time. Um, actually, since you guys can't do it, let me hop back and we'll do it together. So we'll go into motivation, let's right click and let's create. So you'll see a create button here, you'll create group. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag and drop things together um, and, and rename them. Okay, so I'm gonna choose into Arab, Asian, African-American, Hindu, Jewish, Okay, so I'm just gonna select a few. I'm gonna group and I'm gonna name this race, ethnicity, right? Um, then I'm gonna start like my second group. And then I will, for the sake of time, I will copy and paste over the group that I had for my other worksheet. I know that you guys won't be able to do that, um, but you can start the grouping and it's not gonna be perfect, but it, at least it'll give you a good place to start. All right, so I'm gonna group it here and then I'll do sexual orientation. So this is a little bit of like the data cleaning inside of uh, Tableau. And I did this honestly, because I, when I was looking at kind of the insights that I, we wanted to distill, and when I was looking at the data that we had from the Excel, I didn't feel like it warranted a whole lot of transformation. Uh, before I got it into Tableau, I felt like the format was fine. Um, 
you know, everything could be achieved through like calculations or groupings like this. But I would say that when you're working with, you know, bigger data, the thing for me that makes me kind of start thinking about leveraging other tools to do the data transformation or data wrangling is, am I joining a lot of different tables, right? Or like data from different sources? If so, then I'm probably not gonna do it all in Tableau. I'm probably gonna do it in a different uh, tool or different method, right? Upstream before I get it into the BI tool. Um, <clears throat> is the format of the data gonna have to change? If so, I'm probably not gonna leverage Tableau. I mostly use Tableau for like, insights consumption and and that like front end uh tableau prep is a great free um tableau free data wrangling tool and then you know we have r we have python a bunch of other places where we can do the data wrangling but within like the tableau desktop or tableau public interface there are some things that we can do but if it's kind of heavy, you know, data wrangling and data engineering, I'm not doing it on Tableau. So Eric, hopefully that answers that question that you had in there. Um, okay, so we have some grouping here. Let me copy and paste the other group that I had just for the sake of time. All right, so I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna rename this. All right, and so I'm gonna uh, carry over this motivation group into the sheet now. So that we can get us of. Okay, nice. Like now it's a lot more consolidated. I also want to get a sense of like the number of victims. So let me go back here. So we see uh, the the number of victims and the change over time by the motivation. I'm going to switch that out to be motivation group and let's see what that looks like. So we don't have data for disability, don't have data for immigration status, um, or not a lot of data, right? It's inconsistent. And then we do have some data for religion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carry over motivation group into the filters. And I'm going to filter out disability and immigration just because again, no data or very little inconsistent data. So for this analysis, it might not make sense. All right. Um, and something that we might think about is like, we can change the axis here because if they're all in different scales, um, it might be a little bit misleading, right, to like, if race and ethnicity are taking the, the big chunk of uh, hate victim, hate crimes, it might be a little bit misleading to incorporate the same axis for like gender and religion, which happen at much smaller scales. Um, but something that I, I think is, something that I think might be helpful here, so I see that this is going across time, is I'm more, because I'm more interested in showing like the trends over time, right, and, and less focused on showing like the total number, which is what, what the height of the bars represents, I'm going to change this and I'm going to remove some of victims from the row. So now we see it all kind of in one table, with just a bar that's the same size. And instead of a bar, I wanna show them as circles. And I'm going to change this to fit the entire view. So I get a little bit more of a workspace. All right, um, some quick formatting stuff. I'm gonna label this directly over the circle. So now I see kind of the change over time uh, and the the colors are, right, so the darker the blue, the bigger the change, but I think what I want to do is I want the size of the circle to represent that change, because again, that's really the, the story that I'm trying to drive home, is that now users, as soon as they look at the table, right, they're able to see, like, where, when, in which point in time uh, there was, like, a huge change, right? An influx and a shrink of victims. So that's why I like this chart here, um, but we're gonna change some things up a little bit because I don't love that the text is overlaying the bubbles. Um, so something that for me is helpful, and this is a little bit of a Tableau hack, is I create like a dummy, um, a dummy measure in the rows so that it scales everything um, and gives it a little bit more space. And then what you can do, so if you saw there, because I did it relatively quickly, is I double clicked into the rows and I just clicked, I entered zero and hit enter. 
um, that created this, again, dummy axis here that I can right click over and say show header and it's gonna hide that for us, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go into size and I'm gonna make the size a little bit bigger so I get some more space. All right, I think that's probably as far as I can go. And I'm gonna change the title of the sheet to Hate Crimes Over Time by Motivation Group. So if you're used to something like um, Excel, this is very similar, right? This is a Tableau workbook. It has your connection to data, and then you have sheets where you're doing your analysis. And again, when I think about Excel and um, you know trying to draw an analogy between Excel and Tableau, the sheets here are really more like your pivot tables um, and less like a, a worksheet, right? So because we're doing different pivots of our data and different aggregations. Any questions before I move on? I feel like I'm moving super fast <laughs> and it's because I'm worried about timing, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them out there. If you have, if you're, you know, have any questions on like the interface to I'm happy to share. All right, so from here, there's not a lot more from that first page that I really wanted to tell the story, right? So like if we, let's go back to the, this. There's a lot of detail, a lot of information. When I'm trying to deliver the story, I, I'm thinking about like those key insights that I wanna deliver and how can I deliver them concisely without bogging my end user down with like a whole bunch of visualizations and information. For this session, like I said, we're not gonna you know, go into where is this happening, who's being victimized and who's offending, which what, those are really interesting uh, insights that I did wanna analyze. For today's session, we're not gonna have the time. What I wanted to show was again, for my end user, if I'm trying to deliver a story for them, I wanna tell them, Hate crimes are on the rise and the trends are different, right? Like when and uh, when those, those hate crimes are rising across motivations, right? Another thing, as we were looking at motivations, I wanted to get a better sense of, this was more like qualitative, like, you know, what's the most common reason for hate crimes occurring? And we see here it's race, race and uh, ethnicity. So when I go back to my sheet, I think that's one insight that I'm missing. I don't have that, right? So I'm gonna uh, create that by going back to my first sheet. I'm just gonna double, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say duplicate. So again, I'm not starting from scratch. Um, I'm gonna remove my calculated fields like that are gonna calculate the percent of total or percentage change, because that's not what I'm looking at right now. And I'm gonna add motivation group here. So I'm going to, uh, and because we're really looking at total, we don't need year. So I'm gonna remove year. I don't know how to hide this little toolbar up here. So I'm gonna remove year from columns. All right, now that we've removed year, I also wanna pivot because I wanna see it like across. Um, all right, so that's interesting. Let's sort it. So if you saw here, there's a pivot, a quick pivot uh, button where you can swap your rows and columns. You can also do that manually by just dragging and dropping. And now I wanna sort. So there's a sort button up here in the toolbar and I'm gonna sort descending. So now I see race and ethnicity have the largest uh, total victims, right, between our time period. But I wanna know is like the share. So, because I'm calculating another percentage, I can do a quick table calculation. So right click, and I'm gonna choose percent of total. All right, so I see percent of total here. And what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna switch. So I'm gonna go back and forth, right? So I'm gonna take, this victims, the, the percentage total, and I'm gonna drag it over into the label because that's what I wanna visualize for them is I wanna give them the label, but I also want them to see the total number of victims. So I'll drag victims back to my columns. So now they get both, right? They see the total number in terms of like the size of the bar. So they get a sense of like the magnitude um, and then I'm going to also show them the percent of that total. So again, they see the, the 
proportions, right? Not only are they seeing like the magnitude, the total number of victims, but they're able to see the portion of that whole pie, right? And I'm gonna hide, actually, I'll leave this for now so I can show you guys later. Um, something else that I did notice that we did in the other chart, but not in this one, is we filtered, so let me go back here, we filtered the motivation group. And I think that this is something that we're gonna have to do for the entire workbook, just so that we keep the analysis concise, right? We're gonna compare apples to apples um, and drive insights apples to apples. So I will, uh, you can right click or hit this drop down carrot for filters and click apply to worksheets. And what you'll do is you'll choose all using this data source. So now this is gonna become a global filter, all right? So if I go back to hate crimes over time, now I see that this has been filtered by motivation group. And then same here. Now I really see it because it's removed uh, two of those motivations. And then something, this is just like a quick tip that I, I it really does work for me um, is by default, your window size, like your sheet canvas is set to standard. I always go in and I get it to fit the entire view. And what that does is like, it might look really big here, right, in a sheet, but when we go to build a dashboard, we can adjust the sizing of it. And the this uh, will take up the entire object that we dedicate to it. So I'll show you guys what I mean in a second, but this has been like a quick tip for me. Um, and I'm gonna change the title here too. So I'm gonna do uh, hate crimes. Actually, that's a little bit redundant. So I'll do motivation as percentage of total. All right, so I feel like I have three different insights that I wanna deliver, right? In terms of hate crime trends, but when I'm thinking about del delivering it to my end user, I don't want them to tap through the sheets and I don't want them to like have to like dig through these visualizations, even though I feel like these visualizations on their own are okay. The story really comes together when they're all like when we put these insights together, right? That's when the narrative starts uh, coming into play. So instead of sheets, what we're going to do is we're going to create a dashboard, right? So if you look here, we have our data source pane, which we had talked about. We have different sheets where this is like the individual components of that story, right? So think of these as pages. And now what I want to do is I want to I want to create a paragraph or a chapter, I guess. If these are pages, I want to create a, a chapter. So I'm going to do that using dashboards. So we have a new worksheet icon, which is this one page and a plus sign. And then we have a new dashboard icon, which is our quadrant and a plus sign. So I'm going to click that. And now I have my dashboard canvas. And this looks a lot different than our sheet canvas, right? So I'm just going to give you like a little bit of a lay of the land for our dashboards. You can adjust the size here um, if you want to have a larger canvas. But where you see this white area and it says drop sheets here, this is your canvas. This is your like your book <laughs> where you're putting your chapters together. Um, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more height just because I don't think that um the 900 or 800 is, is enough, but we might change that. Um you can also set, by the way, this is another great part of Tableau is that you can build for different applications, right? So you can build like your default. Um, and this is really meant for somebody who's going to be working on like a laptop or viewing on a laptop. Then you can build for somebody who's going to be viewing on a, a, a phone or a mobile device. Um, in here, we see our sheets. So these are the sheets that we built. And then we have objects. So objects are different components to uh, bring the dashboard together. We have text objects, image. Um, we have you know, extensions. You can add like navigation and download buttons. And then sheets are going to also become objects on your dashboard. Honestly, when I'm like talking to people who are brand new in Tableau, and the same kind of double click and see what happens premise. Uh, I, I do that in dashboards as well. So I just let's double click and see what happens. We know that we want to include all three sheets. Um, so we can double click all three and just kind of see where they where they end up. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of 
the legend just for now because I feel like it's it's distracting me a little bit as I'm building my canvas so what I'll do is I'll click over and then I'll click x okay so let's see like where all this landed um still super busy and the reason that this is not going to work is because of the way that our end users are going to read our dashboards so let's go back to the way that we and let me cut those because it's making so much noise all right so let's go back to the to the original dashboard i don't know i don't know uh you know i haven't talked to you guys but i'm pretty sure when you started reading this you were scanning top left to top right went down left down right down left down right right that is the way that the natural reader is interpreting information on a page. It's a that Z form, right? And so when we're thinking of constructing our narrative, we have to think about the, the order of information or the order that we want that information delivered, right? So most of the time, in business reporting especially, we're going to deliver our high level aggregate information at the top, and then we're going to start distilling that those insights into different segments at the bottom, right? So the, the lower down you get in the page, the more detailed that information is going to be. And we see that here too, right? We have our most aggregate information. So we're looking at totals. And then we start diving into the motivations and then the geography and all of that, right? So going back to the dashboard that we're building, this is not going to work because it's not in that order of information, that, in the order that we want that information delivered. The first thing that I want our end user to do when they look at our dashboard is I want them to know what this is about and they're not going to really get an understanding of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag over a text object at the very, very top and I'm going to create a title. So I'm going to say, hey, crimes in Chicago between 2012 and 2023, right? And I'm going to increase the size of this so that it's a header, the proper header. And I'm also going to change the color to black. All right, so now we have a text object here. You can adjust the height of it by uh, holding your cursor between objects and then you'll get this uh, this arrow. All right, so I'm gonna adjust here. All right, replacing toggles, filters, slicers on a dashboard. All right, so Eric is asking, what is a good UX practice for placing toggles, filters, slicers on a dashboard? So when it comes to filters, um, if they are global filters, right, so filters that are going to impact your entire work uh, workbook or your entire dashboard, most of the time they should go up at the top, right? Um, if they are more local, so if you have one filter that's only being applied to one sheet, uh, you want to get that filter as close to your uh, to that sheet that it's going to impact, right, so that users know. But something that I've I've started to notice a lot is that users are going from like the top to and before what I didn't like, but was prevalent was we would have filters at the right. And you guys saw that on default. But now people are using Tableau to build kind of like web interface uh, looks. And that's actually been super popular. So I'll show you guys some examples of that where they have all of their like navigation, their toggles, all of those different slicers over on the left-hand side. And then they also have text prompting. So that's another thing that we're gonna try to incorporate in this dashboard is some text prompting to build our narrative. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention was um, the, the power that I think Tableau also holds is that users can like, as a as a developer, you can implement like action filters. So if they click on, you know, a year, that click is gonna is gonna filter the rest of the visualizations out. If we have time, I'll show you guys how to do that. There's a simple way to do that, and then there's a more customizable way or configurable way to do that. Um, but right, so as I'm I've been kind of taking inventory of the trends over time, um, with a lot of the, the advancements in NLP and generative AI, I've seen that users and users are going away from like wanting to 
dig, right, and like interact with those visualizations really uh, at like deep levels to like just give me the insights and let me like write them out for me, right? Um, especially again with the the advancements in NLP. So, so for this session, what I'm going to focus on is also like having some text to deliver those insights instead of enabling that like drill down and interactivity for our users. But that's definitely like the power of Tableau and the components of it. Um, that was a really good question, Eric. And Eric, I'm so glad that you're, <laughs> you're so uh, engaged here. All right, so I'm going to hide some of our our sheet titles again because I think that they're distracting and I'm I can do a better job of describing things, right? So I'm gonna hover over like the the titles and I'm just gonna hide them all. I'm gonna give myself a really clean canvas here. Something else is that because I've included the like the the text above the bar. I don't need this access here, axes here. So I'm going to uh, click over it, right click, show header, and I'm going to remove it. All right. And now I'm going to click over to like our, our percentage change over time by motivation. And because this is a deeper cut of the data, right, we're going from total trends into a segment of it, I'm going to drag that underneath our uh, bar chart. And now you see that as I'm dragging um, dragging that object, I see like this gray bar or this gray box, right? Wherever that gray box lands, that's where the sheet is gonna land. So this is like something that's kind of frustrating for Tableau users. Um, I don't know how it is in Power BI, but um, the <laughs> like just the maneuverability of, um, of of the objects can be kind of difficult, right? So that's why I always make a note to say like, wherever that gray box lands, that's where your visualization will land. Okay, so over time, and I have my uh, trends by motivation. Something else is that like, I also wanted to show at the same time, like the portion of uh, motivation over the total. So what I'm gonna do is this bottom part, I'm actually gonna drag it right next to motivation uh, trends. Okay. So this is coming together, but I'm gonna show you now kind of how we can start to distill this a little bit better. The first thing, so I'm gonna start getting rid of more stuff because I think it's repetitive. It's taking a lot of space. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this, these grid lines. I wanna give myself again, as clean of a canvas as I can in order to really deliver the insights and have my end user like pick that up as quickly as possible without paying attention to like any of the other distractors. So essentially that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove my distractors. So I'm going to get rid of my row grid lines here. Already looking better. I'm going to come in here and I don't want any grid lines. All right. And I'm going to go super fast now. So please forgive me, but I know that we're running out of time. I'm going to, this will be recorded. So you'll, you guys will get to, you know, go back and kind of do this, but I want to show you like what, what a difference this makes, okay? Um, I'm going to get rid of the, again, the axes here because I labeled everything and I'm gonna get rid of my motivation group and I'll show you why in a second because I don't think I need that. All right, I'm gonna get rid of year at the in this bottom section because I have year up here and I think what I can do is I can have the dots correlate to the bars so that in the end, I can tell one story instead of three separate stories, all right? So to get that correlated, I think I'm gonna have to incorporate some empty containers and I need an empty container here so that I can take the space. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna adjust the bar in here because this is a little bit too wide for what I need. So I can adjust the size of the bar by going back to the sheet. All right, this is looking better. I'm gonna hide the title. Trevor, <laughs> Trevor asks, I don't know if you deal with this, but do you have clients that are old fashioned and want modern graphs, but also don't like them? Yes. So we like, I would say that the majority of the time our users just want tables um, and we have to, so what I do is like, by the way, if you work in BI, um, 
what I recommend is give them what they want and then give and then recommend something else. Because that kind of like, right, you're satisfying your client, but then you're also doing like your due diligence and your duty as an expert of like recommending best practices for them. And I wish I could show you guys an example, but we had somebody say like, oh, I just want this Excel sheet replicated. And so that's what we did. We replicated that Excel sheet and then we had uh, trends and insights that were added above it. But right. So they got what they wanted and then they got a little bit of extra. Um, but I would say that also the other thing is if you're in um if you're in data science, you've probably heard like this a sense sentiment that like a lot of people because they work in data science want to build machine learning models, even though it could have been done much easier through like a simple, you know, Excel formula or something like that. It's like, it's like don't build something for the sake of just building it or because you can, but build build something because it has value. And so sometimes those like, you know, modern or advanced graphs really don't provide a lot of value. Um, and, and it would be pertinent of us to like stay away from them. That's why like in this one, I, I was like, these are really simple charts, but I think that they tell the story. Um, okay, so we don't, we're, I'm running out of time. But I want to show you um, something that I did in my other like final example uh, that I thought really helped drive the story home. Because what we're missing here is like if if we had an end user just look at this, uh, they'd be like, "What is this?" Okay, like you're telling me hate crimes in Chicago between 2012 and 2023, but like, like what are these percentages? What are these colors? Right, like what are these motivations? So we're missing like some a lot of that information that I actually think the um was really helpful in this original uh dashboard. So I'm gonna go into my final dashboard just to kind of show you guys what I did. And there's like this also a lot of research done around colors and like uh what types of colors to use and like what they signify and we don't have a lot of time. We didn't have a lot of time for the session to go into that, but um, I was very careful in like picking the colors where I feel like red is associated with bad. And so when we saw a growth in hate crimes, I, I made sure that that was red. And then, you know, not a growth in hate crimes was gray and black. I didn't want to use like happy colors because these are hate crimes. This is not a happy uh, topic. So in here, I added my source because I think that's also very important. Um, it helps users understand like where that data is coming from. If you are a BI, you know, creator developer, make sure, especially if you don't sit in like, if your organization is not centralized, I think what is what has worked in, you know, other organizations that I've seen is they add like, not just like the source, if, if they have a particular source of the data, but like who to contact if they have questions about that dashboard. So having like a byline, you can say like, bye, and then have your name there. And then that name is clickable. So if they click it, they can email, it'll open up an email uh, address to that person. That has been really cool. Um, something else that I think is like now just kind of standard is incorporating like a timestamp of when the data was last refreshed, and you can do that directly in Tableau. So that's like another best practice that I've seen. All right, so let's go back to kind of like the visualizations here and, and again, distilling the insights. So I removed the text from the bubbles because I didn't want this to, I don't want it to be distracting. I wanted the end user to understand again, when hate crimes were rise, on the rise, and then which motivations really uh, drove that rise. So we see for 2019, there was a 48% increase in hate crimes, and that was uh, mostly contributed by gender identity hate crimes, right? Even though race, race and ethnicity take up 64% of the share of hate crimes overall, in 2019, it was the bump in uh, gender identity hate crimes that caused this shift, right? All right, let's also look at um, where we saw 77% uh, in 2022. We see that the, the other biggest shift here was in race and ethnicity, right? So you're seeing like a shrink and swell in hate crimes within these segments, but then also overall. Um, something that I didn't do, but I think is awesome is on the tool tips, you can adjust 
the tool tip so that you can have some narr narration. And I'll show you guys how to do that if we have time. I added some prompting around like what the visualization was showing. So total hate crimes percentage change by year. Motivation as a percent of total hate crimes down here. In here, what I think would make sense is to include some information about the hate crime. So have another table where, you know, we explain what, how we define race, race and ethnicity hate crimes, how we identify sexual orientation hate crimes. Uh, that would have been really interesting here. And then here you see these are, again, uh, you know, the growth of or the adoption of NLP in our everyday lives and uh, processes. I wanted to incorporate some text in here just to really drive those insights home so that our end user doesn't have to go digging at them, right? So I want them to know that hate crimes have been on the rise. The largest year, year rise was between 21 and 22 when hate crimes rose by 77%. Um, and then I wanted them to know that 64.7% of those total hate crimes were race and ethnicity motivated. And so again, that's like what's taking the biggest share. That's the, big, the biggest uh, hate crime uh, of the pie, right? Any questions? I feel like we breathed, like we went super fast uh, at the end. I can show you guys also how to like update those tool types, which I think is really interesting. Um, and this is where like when users are hovering over your uh, your their marks, they get a little bit of extra information. So we'll go into the tool types. Again, this is that text. Um, and we can say, we can start narrating things. So in year, I have caps lock on in year. There were, I'm going to do the sum victims of motivation, hate crimes. Um, this was a from change from last year. All right, let's look at what this looks like. Remove. Okay. And so now they get some text. Right. So instead of kind of so look at this. Here they get like a little bit of a table with some additional information. Now they can hover over and they see, they see that in 2022, there were 174 victims of race and ethnicity hate crimes. And this was about 160% change from last year. And you can even do like conditional formatting on the tooltip so that um, they can get those insights. So uh, I see somebody asked about filters. I didn't include, I did include those global filters. We can add them to the dashboard. In fact, we can also do quick filters, but I think because this data is so aggregated, um, we didn't do that. I can add, let me show you guys really quick how to add a filter. So you can see this drop down here. I can go to filter because we did filter the motivation in the group. I can show that here. I can change it to a drop down, and then uh, again because it's global, I can choose to include it at the very top, or what we're, we've been seeing is on the side. I will show you guys, and I know we're at time, but just real quick, if I can show you what uh, what you'll see when you go to Tableau Public. So I published this to Tableau Public. Um, you guys can find this on Tableau Public, but you can also find a whole bunch of other dashboards. And um, there was a dashboard that inspired this. Uh, and it was one created by Chimdi. And let me open that up for you guys. This one is much better than mine. But I want you to take a look at this and compare this to the original dashboard that we saw and uh, get a better understanding of what worked, what, what didn't work, and how you can incorporate it into your best practices. Um, and then another quick, quick, <laughs> uh, just to show you guys. This is what I was talking about in terms of like that web UI where people are now uh, starting to, to migrate their navigation and their filters over to the left-hand side and really giving this like kind of a cool next-gen website look. Um, so a lot of cool things that you guys can do with Tableau. I will share my presentation with you guys. Um, connect with me, send me all the questions, all the feedback. Um, and you can find all of the resources on uh, my GitHub. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'm so glad that you guys were uh, engaging with me on the Q&A on the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Selma. Thanks. Bye.